Code Workbook is Foundry's graphical interface for writing code. Data scientists, analysts, and many others use Code Workbooks to transform data, iterate on analyses, and make charts. I'll start by orienting you to the Code Workbooks UI, and then we'll build a series of transformations in Python and SQL to create this visualization, which shows the total spending at shops and restaurants in each park section segmented by day of the week. Let's get started. Now, here we are in Code Workbooks. In the middle here, we can see all of the nodes in our Code Workbook, including the input data sets and including the plot. On the left-hand side, if we click on Contents, we can see all of the transformations and data sets in the workbook. On the right-hand side, I have the console and the global code, which is where I'll import libraries that need to be used throughout multiple transforms. On the top, I have the output folder configuration, which is where I decide the destination for output data sets. I have the ability to switch branches or create a new branch here. And up here, I can configure the environment. Say, for example, I wanted to add a new package. I can go to Configure Environment, Customize Profile. If I wanted to add Seaborn, for example, I can search for Seaborn. Click Add, and then update the environment. Now that we've gone through the Code Workbooks UI, we're going to go ahead and make a code workbook from scratch. Starting from anywhere in Foundry, you're going to type Control J and search for Code Workbooks. Click on New Workbook, give it a name. and click Save. Now that we're in Code Workbooks, I'll start with a data set. So I'll click Import Data Set. I'll search for Retail Transactions. Hit Search Everywhere to search everywhere on the stack. I'll select Retail Transactions. Select. And now I can see that I have this data set imported into my Code Workbook. And here, I'm able to see a preview of the data set. Next, I'm going to import dining transactions. Search everywhere. Click on that and select. And now I have both of the data sets that I need imported. Overall, our goal here is going to be to calculate the total spend in a given weekday for a specific park section. To do this, we'll have to aggregate both data sets and join them to each other. So I'll click New Transform. You can make a transform using Python, R, SQL, or using templates, which allow you to generalize and reuse your code. Note that you can combine all of these types of transforms within the same workbook. For now, we'll make a Python transform that's going to take in dining transactions and retail transactions. Note that dining transactions was automatically made an input. To add retail transactions as an input as well, I'll click the plus sign, click on transactions, and it shows up here as an input. In the top here, you can see that dining transactions and retail transactions are both inputs and they are Spark data frames. But I can change what type of input they are here. Next thing I'll do, is I'll give my function a name. Renaming the function will also rename this transform. And now I'll paste in my code. Now I have my code. In this code, I'm extracting the day of week from the date column for both data sets, aggregating by the park section in the day of the week, and then joining the two aggregated data sets on park section and the day of the week. Note here that I've imported the necessary PySpark functions. However, this might be a common library that I'll need to use in multiple places, in which case I'm better off importing it into the global code so I don't have to import it on every transform. Next, I'll hit preview. Note that when I do that, 
it's not actually going to save it as a data set. However, if I am to toggle on save as data set, then it will indeed save the output of this transformation as a data set that I can use in the rest of Foundry, just like I would use any other data set. Now my data set has finished building and I can look at a preview of it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to write a SQL transform to add together the total dining spend and the total retail spend. To do this, I will hit new transform. This one's going to be SQL code. And you'll see that it already has the base select statement written out for me. Select all from aggregate and join. And now I will paste the code in. In this SQL, all we're doing is adding together the total dining spend and the total retail spend. In this case, we're going to save the output as a data set, meaning that we can use the result of this like we would any other data set throughout Foundry. So I will toggle that on and click Run. While this is running, I want to point out that the relationship between data sets and transforms is inferred and drawn on the graph. If I want to change the layout of the graph, I can do so by hitting Layout and hit Layout All Nodes. And now I can see a more clear view of the graph. Given that this transform is outputting a data set, we'll need to name the data set. And again, like we discussed at the beginning, data sets that you produce in code workbooks are saved in the output folder, which is created for you when you create the code workbook. The next thing that we're going to do is create a plot that shows the total spend by park section segmented by day of the week. So we'll click this node, hit the plus sign next to it, and this time we're going to do another Python transform. However, given that we're going to use a pandas data frame to create these charts, instead of having add dining and retail spend be a Spark input, we're going to hit this dropdown and change this to a pandas data frame. That way, it will save us the line that we would have to use to convert this data set to pandas. So first, I'll name the transform. And then I will paste my code in. We'll need a couple of packages here, which I will add into the global code. In this code, we pivot the data, set the dots per inch, create a bar chart, and then add formatting and labels. So there's no need to save the output of this transform as a data set because our goal here is to create a chart. So then I'll click preview. And now that my preview has successfully run, if I hit visualizations, I can see a larger version of this chart. And now I can hit view image to see a larger version of the plot. I can download the image or I can copy it to use in a notepad. So to summarize, we've taken these two data sets, aggregated and joined them, use a SQL transform to derive the total spend, save it as a data set, and create a chart. This concludes our introduction to code workbooks. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future tutorials.